everybody and thank you for joining me today so pretty much finished with Goron link now working more into main link in the center yeah I got a fair amount done my diagonal is very steep <laughs> that's okay as usual I'm just following the colors go more diagonalish and they help me decide what shape I'm gonna make <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, so a Nintendo um, released a sneak peek video showing some of the gameplay of the new um, Tears of the Kingdom uh, Zelda game for the Switch. It looks amazing. I am so eager for it to come out. Yeah, we have it on pre-order, so <laughs> but it doesn't come out until mid-May, so yeah, but uh the graphics are very similar to Breath of the Wild, and it's got the open world concept instead of more linear gameplay, which we really enjoyed. And um, yeah, they have some new uh, abilities. So they have one called um, Fuse, so you can put objects together so you can make different weapons. Like you could put a rock, fuse it with a tree branch, and uh, create a huge hammer. Um, Oh, they had a really cool one that was, uh, was, um, you fused the, um, the arrow with an eye from your inventory, which you can get from defeating enemies, and it makes a homing arrow. So you shoot it sort of in the general direction of the enemy you want to hit, and it homes in on it. It was just like, wow. That's really cool. And of course, you could also make the freezing arrows, the fire arrows. But uh, yeah, that was just so neat. And they showed you could make all sorts of things by putting stuff together. Like he made a raft with um, a little fans on it. So it was like a motorboat. Um, he even made a car. Uh, yeah, it was just really cool. But uh, enemies can also make uh, interesting combinations for weapons too, so there's that as well. There was one he showed that the enemy basically had a giant fan and was able to um, to use it to blast air at Link and make him fall off the edge of the uh, the sky uh, island. So yeah, it was really cool. They even had one called Ascend, so you can actually go through the the roof or the ceiling of any win of well not any but most uh, most uh rooms so yeah they showed like there was a big mountain and rather than having to use like a stamina to get up to climb up the side of the mountain like you had to in breath of the wild it actually you could just ascend and go right through the ceiling and hit the top of the mountain like wow that was just really neat i'm thinking man like how much programming they had to put into that to be able to make it so that you can fuse things together and um, and you can take them apart later and yeah create new weapons and stuff that must have been just an incredible amount of of coding and programming like yeah my uh, my hat is off to them it was looks like it's really going to be worth the wait you know because gee I can't even remember when did Breath of the Wild come out a couple years ago. Maybe even longer, because I'm trying to think. We got it for Christmas one year, and I'm thinking we might have got it pre-pandemic. So, yeah, it might have been 2019 or even earlier. I'd have to look that up. But yeah, the uh, the Legend of Zelda games you gotta wait a long time for them, but they're always worth the wait, in my opinion. <clears throat> Except for uh, Majora's Mask, which I'm stitching on. <laughs> yeah, they um. Ocarina of Time was such a, oh I missed this book. Ocarina of Time was such a smash hit that uh, they very quickly turned around and they only had a year to put out a new game. So they came up with Majora's Mask, and that is why they used the same characters because then they didn't have to recreate the avatars, right? So they used the ones from Ocarina of Time and repurposed them. And actually, I thought kind of added to the game. 
that you could watch it and go, oh, hey, wait, that was, you know, the potion shop lady is now the uh, innkeeper's grandma, you know, and uh, that kind of thing. So that was cool. And, uh, yeah, and they put so much detail. Like, I've been watching um, some YouTubers. They show, like, little little snippets from Majora's Mask. And there's so many things. I played that game multiple times, and I still miss them. So, yeah. Yeah, and I'll be interested to see with the, uh, the new abilities to fuse and stuff like that, the kind of trick shots that uh, Luigi Brothers are going to come out with, because um, they do like to do... Uh, videos of that you should check out their channel they um they uh do ones of trick shots and some of them are really fun like uh in breath of the wild they did they use the um what is that ability called now i can't remember but it's where you basically can pause time on an object and then build up the energy so you can say hit it with a hammer several times and then when the time runs out it will shoot forward with all that energy at once so you hit it like six or seven times it will fly forward with the force of seven hits at once so you can send logs flying and stuff so yeah he did some really awesome trick shots with those like attach the little balloons to make the uh, logs float and then built up the energy and sent them sh uh, sailing around like a you know a shot or missile or something and then would pop the balloons and they would fall down and yeah you know, take out three enemies at once. It was pretty cool. Yeah, games sure have come a long way in my lifetime. My husband, they actually had an Atari and Pong. So the very first, I was, I'm five years younger than him. So the first ones I remember is the original 8-bit Nintendo games. And then, <clears throat> yeah, what we've got now is just, it's amazing how far we come in our lifetime. Three, three, six, two. Yeah, my husband really loves the Ready Player One movie where people play in the Oasis, right? Which is like a, a virtual gaming immersive world, 3D world. And, uh, you know, we had someone saying, do you think that'll be possible? And I said, oh, I think eventually one day. Maybe not in our lifetimes, but you never know. But, I mean, they already have virtual reality headsets and stuff, so. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that, <coughs> pardon me, if that uh, reaches that level. Yeah, it's funny. Um, my son really likes Minecraft. And uh, he got a couple of the stuffies from them. And he has one that's like a totally flat pillow that looks like one of the wolves. And so my husband said we should name it 8-Bit. And then he has a wolf that is like three more three-dimensional. And I said, so that one should be 64-Bit. <laughs> he says, no, they're named Wolfie. But <laughs> so we sometimes joke about that. Oh, look, you have 8-Bit. <laughs> okay, three, three, four, six. Yeah, obviously there's going to be a fair number of greens in this area because we're working on Link's tunic. Although there's going to be a bunch of black next to it because that's the, uh, the shadowy part on his tunic. So yeah, I'm learning to trust the uh, darker colors on this pattern. Because yeah, like I've said before, it's... um stitching up a bit darker and more purple in the shading than the mock-up but i think it looks good yeah i was a little concerned at first but yeah i'm really happy with how this is looking every time i uh i uh take it off the frame and spread it out to take a progress picture i am i am wowed by it so Yeah, and I figured, like I was said, I was a little nervous about the shading because also I had never stitched any but anything from this uh, designer before off Etsy. But uh, yeah, I am happy with, uh, with how it's looking. Yeah, it's pixels and bits. I just found them 
browsing. I already had um, the stained glass Zelda pattern and I kind of thought I should get one for Majora's Mask. So that's what I was Googling and yeah, I found this. And uh, this uh, pattern worked on Pattern Keeper, obviously, as you can see. <laughs> that's what I'm using for my, uh, my pattern for the app. There was um, a couple of colors in the legend that didn't come through automatically, and I just had to input those thread numbers manually. Like, the symbols came through, but they weren't assigned to the color number for some reason, just two of them. But I, uh, you know, I went to the edit legend and just put them in manually, and then it works perfectly, just like any fully supported pattern once I did that. So... Yeah, I was really crossing my fingers because it didn't say if it was Pattern Keeper compatible. And I was thinking, well, it's a smaller pattern, so if it's not, I'll just deal with it, you know, being stitched off paper, even though I haven't stitched off paper since I started using Pattern Keeper. I've been so spoiled. So, oh, look at that. Almost unthreading my needle there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, luckily it worked. Yeah, not all PDFs will work. It has to have the proper coding in it so that Pattern Keeper can read the symbols. If it's just a flat scan, like just a picture of the pattern page, it won't work. The actual symbols have to be, has to be created in a something like WinStitch or Mac, Mac, blah, Mac Stitch, which is the Mac version. Um, because, uh, yeah, those actually encode the each symbol with its own like unique code so that Pattern Keeper can read it so that it can search. Yeah. <clears throat> if you have a PDF that isn't fully supported, you can still load them in and mark them off generally. There is a way to um, assign grids and such, get them to line up. Um, so you can take a picture of your, of your uh, pattern page and upload it but it won't have the search because obviously it's just a picture each individual little square isn't doesn't have the coding built in that pattern keeper needs to uh to read to be able to work Yeah, using this app has definitely increased my uh, my stitching speed because I'm not having to uh, not having to pull out a separate color key and search for the matching symbol myself. Which oh, there were so many times I finally had to hand it over to my husband and ask him to help me find it because I've been through the uh, the color key like three times and I knew the symbol was there but I couldn't find it. <laughs> so yeah. It's really nice that uh, I just select it on the screen and boom, it's already already searched up for me. And then plus you have all that nice extra little bonus features of it telling you how many stitches you have left of each color. And yeah. Yeah, so we passed 37,000 yesterday. I actually ended on um, 37,001. <laughs> If I'd been watching, I would have done one fewer stitch so I could end on a, you know, even 37,000, but ah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and we are past the 75% mark, so let's see if I can get that to, there we go. So yeah, I said I was aiming for 80, 85%, and I think that is doable. And then I will also try to get one more percent done on Firefly, which is the massive project. That one takes a lot more stitches to get to 1%. That takes over 10 times the stitches it takes for this one to get 1%, so yeah. could do a stitch out of order here, but as I don't have a ton of threads and needles in this area, I'm not gonna. Sometimes I do one out of order when I have so many and I don't feel like doing a stitch and parking, especially when it's really crowded, but 
this case. Let me do that so that I can avoid closing these in. So yeah, I got some bigger blocks here. So this whole area here will go quite quickly. It's all, all black. But I'm going to do what I usually do, which is split it up a little so that I don't get uh, repetitive stress. So sort of do a few stitches of this color, do a row or two of the black, and then come back and do a stitch or two of confetti. And yeah, those built-in breaks save my arms. Okay. Yeah, it was funny. So I was saying how son got a great big Isabel stuffy for his birthday. That's what he wanted. And then I get an email from Amazon today and it was like, it says, we have, you know, issued a refund. And I'm thinking, well, I didn't request a refund. You know, everything I ordered arrived and it was fine. And yeah, they apparently they, um, they took a little too much in import fees because they, uh, they take it up front so that you don't have to deal with paying a broker or anything like that. And uh, so I got a refund of a whole 17 cents. <laughs> oh, As, you know, my husband said, you know, I'm wondering, did the fee to the credit card company cost more than that? Like, oh my goodness. I, I said, well, I guess that's the whole thing though, is they want you to know that, hey, you know, you get the cheapest price available if the import fee drops, yeah. Well, it's funny, I ordered a, a sheet music book off eBay one time, oh, years ago, like 20 years ago almost. And uh, after they shipped it to me from the US, they said, oh, it turned out that uh, shipping was two bucks cheaper than, uh, than expected, so I'll just send you two bucks. They just, they, they popped in an envelope and mailed it to me. I still have that $2 <laughs> sitting in a jar because, you know, I'm Canada. It'd be a hassle to try and spend it at a store. And I just, I haven't bothered taking it to a bank. I never remember to because it's only two bucks. So, <laughs> oh, sort of sitting in a jar with pennies and things because, um, yeah, Canada phased out the penny um, a few years ago. I can't remember exactly when, but... Uh, yeah, um, they will charge to the penny when it's electronic, but if you're paying with cash, it gets rounded to the nearest nickel. Because, um, well, pennies were actually costing more than a penny to produce, and, you know, it was a lot of change, and it was kind of a pain. Like, maybe it was worth having pennies, you know, 60 years ago when a couple of pennies could buy you a bag of candy, right? But that's not the case anymore with inflation, so... Yeah, I know um, my dad said he went to New Zealand for a while back in the 90s and that they had already phased out the penny when he was there. So he had to get used to that. Yeah, so we have a few pennies in a jar because it's kind of, you know, the end of an era thing. Yeah, they phased out $1 bills when I was a kid. So my mom hung on to some of those and then $2 bills. Yeah. I know collectors like to have them sometimes. So, yeah, $2 bills were brown. So, yeah, like we have the red is the 50s and the orangey, yellow is the 100s, and then 20s are green, 5s are blue, and uh, 10s are purple. And yeah, so the $2 bill was brown, but, but we don't have that anymore. So kind of stitching across, you know, more than a 10 column wide diagonal here at once because, yeah, this black extends quite a bit.
across more than one column, so I'm gonna do that. And again, I'm doing a little bit of uh, confetti stitches helps to uh, helps to avoid repetitive stress and also keeps me from getting bored. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully keeps you more interested <laughs> watching at home. Okay. Yeah, I got a number three symbol stitch there, kind of right in the center of all that black. <laughs> that means I'm gonna break the black up around it because I still like to not uh, close stuff in. I find the stitch can look a little wonky sometimes. Sort of if you do all the black around it and leave one gap and then you have to fill it in later, I find that bit you fill in later can sometimes look a bit strange, which is why I changed my stitching method. Okay, so back to the black, and this is not going to last very long, obviously. Probably just get the bottom legs here, and then I'm going to have to add another piece for the top legs. Yeah, so bit into the uh, mask of truth here on this side of the black and then his tunic on the, the green part of his tunic on the other side and then we're going to get his arm as well further down diagonal but I don't think we're going to reach that today. should be all we get. Yeah, this is all black in this area, so I don't have to worry that those pin stitches will show through. It's all going to be the same color. Okay, what I'm actually going to do is get, oh, if I can fold this in half, my gosh, my approximation is very off there. Okay. So what I'm actually going to do here is instead of crossing back in this direction, I'm going to cross over in this direction so that I can come from the left hand side. And then I'll have another small thread from the other side just because of that number three symbol breaking it up in the middle. If it wasn't, I would just carry on from here my usual way. So, nice and confusing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you'll see what I mean in a minute. Yeah, so my husband's co-worker is going to be happy with me because um, I uh, was trying to buy frozen yogurt at the uh, grocery store because I can eat that. I can't eat ice cream, but I can eat frozen yogurt, I think, because yogurt's got the bacterial culture in there. It makes it easier to digest. But anyway, so I thought I was buying frozen yogurt because they had in the in the cooler they had the frozen yogurt on one side and then next to it was the ice cream and I was just looking at the different flavors and I didn't realize that I grabbed one from the ice cream side because I was just like "Ooh, look at this you know cheesecake that looks good and of course 
I bought it and I didn't realize till I got it home and I took the tamper seal off so I can't return it, right? I didn't realize until I did that that it was ice cream and not frozen yogurt. It was like, oh, shoot, right? And uh, I was thinking, well, I can keep it for guests, but we don't really have people out around that often. And it's usually we don't have dessert when we do. So, like, I was thinking, I don't know what to do with this. I can't donate it to the food bank because it's perishable, you know. it. Uh, and if you leave it in the freezer too long, it gets freezer burned and gross, right? So... Finally, just thought, okay, I'll send it to, uh, ask my husband, you know, do you guys have a big enough freezer at work that this will fit? He said, oh yeah, every, it'll be gone, you know, in a few days. So yeah, I sent him to, I sent it with him to work. So I said, they'll all be happy with me now. Oh dear. Yeah, just cause I didn't read, I didn't read the label properly. Uh, I'll just like, I bought, oh, I bought a freaking 20 kilo bag of the wrong kind of rice and again did not realize until after i'd opened it so it was uh parboiled rice which is kind of like it's not quite brown rice but it's kind of in between white and brown if that makes sense and yeah, i'm not a big fan of it so uh, but what are you gonna do you know i had already opened it so and you know i had a friend i said do you ever use parboiled rice and she's like no we use jasmine or basmati he's like oh Okay, well, so I've been using it up very slowly. I kind of mix it half and half with the rice that I do like. And uh, yeah, I finally down to, I think, the last quarter of it, but it's been like six years. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> oh. So yeah, the next time I was buying some other rice, my son's like, mom, did you make sure it's the correct kind? <laughs> <laughs> like yes yes oh dear so yeah i'm gonna use up a couple of my shorter pieces on this end here just to do these and then i'm gonna keep stitching this big section over from the left just because yeah like i said that number three symbol breaking it up in the middle just kind of changed how i stitched it It's kind of funny too because in our house it's known as potato rice because I had a container that used to have instant mashed potatoes in it and I'd written potato on it and then I never, I didn't buy it anymore and I reused the container for the rice and so my son said, why does the rice container say potato? And I explained it, he's like, oh, so now this is potato rice. So yeah, parboiled rice is now known as potato rice in our house. Oh, he thinks it's the funniest thing ever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, potato rice. There's no such thing. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could have riced potatoes. Because if you put them through a ricer, right, they make it into little grains. But yeah. Oh, oh dear. Yeah, it's funny the things you come up with. Like, um, in our house, carbonated water is known as bitey water. Because uh, he said it was biting him when he was little. So... Yeah, it's been called that ever since. All right, so this way, I didn't close in that stitch that honestly you can't really see is a different color, but it is. And I'm sure it'll make a difference later on when you back away from the work. But anyway, that way I didn't close that stitch in and I was sort of able to use up some leftover scraps. So that worked out well. So yeah, now back to a small area of just three stitches. Break up that huge section of black there. Goodness, that uh, yeah, you want to come up in the center of that thread so that your pin stitch kind of disappears into the fabric, but sometimes it can be a bit of a pain to get the needle to come up in exactly the right place. Okay. 
77 and a half percent. Okay, so let's get back and forth a bit. This thread is going to run out soon anyway. Yeah, I think it'll be enough to do three more stitches. Just do those now, because then I can tie this thread off. Neighbors across the street looked like they had some plumbing issues. They had a pumper truck out this morning. I hope it didn't they didn't get a flooded basement or anything. Because that would really suck. Yeah, the other issue on this block is a lot of houses had uh, aluminum wiring when they were built. It's not something we really use anymore because um especially here where it gets cold enough like you know we get minus 40 in the winter sometimes colder and uh it's uh it's too brittle and it will contract and break and then arc and yeah there's a couple houses on the street that there were fires because of the wiring and uh yeah fortunately for one of them like it was just mostly smoke and they were able to call the fire department and get it put out right away. But uh, one house, a few houses down from ours, unfortunately, years ago, some was just a toddler, but uh, they were away visiting family. It was Christmas Eve and uh, it caught fire in their attic, but because nobody was home, nobody heard the smoke alarms go off. And it wasn't until the the top floor was completely engulfed in flames that it was caught. And unfortunately, by the time a neighbor saw it and called 911, our streets were just covered in sheer ice. Like it was like, you know, four or five inches of just ice. And so the fire trucks had a hard time getting out without causing an accident. You know, they couldn't really rush and... Uh, yeah, by the time they got there, that upper floor was a complete loss. So, yeah, I felt so bad for them. The whole house had to be gutted, and they had to use those, you know, ozone machines or whatever to get the, the smoke stench out of the rest of it. And, yeah, like, I mean, I guess it's fortunate there was no loss of life, you know. But, uh, yeah, that really sucked for them. So, uh, anyway, yeah, my husband, who he... He's, uh, he's qualified to do electric work, so he's an electronics technician. That's his job, So um, or technologist. Yeah, he, uh, he said, okay, well, I'm going to fix this, and he uh, replaced all our wiring with copper, proper copper wiring, so we don't have that issue anymore because, yeah, we were having issues in our house, and honestly, we are very lucky that there was never a fire because, um, well, we had a bad outlet that killed three microwaves before we realized it was the outlet. You know, I thought it just got a bad microwave. And after the first couple of them, it was after the third one, I kind of went, okay, or was it after the second one? But something like that, I said, okay, something's not right here. You know, we can't be that unlucky with microwaves. And that's when he went and took a look at the uh, outlet. And he said it was actually soft because it was hot and melted and my my gosh, we were so lucky that it never caught fire. Yikes, that was just, that was a fire waiting to happen. So, so we had for a while till he could fix it, we had, um, we had our microwave in the living room because it, that was on a different outlet. Because yeah, he turned off all the power to that outlet entirely to keep it from potentially arcing until it could be fixed. And so we had the, uh, the fridge was running on an extension cord and the, uh, yeah, the microwave was in the living room on an end table. <laughs> oh, goodness. Mm. 
So yeah, we won't be winning any awards for our interior designs anytime soon, but hey, there was no fire, so it was, it was all worth it, yeah. Yeah, and I'm really thankful my, my husband is handy with stuff like that, so we don't have to hire someone to do it. You know, we hired, we had an inspector come out later to certify that everything was done properly and stuff, so. And that actually meant we, uh, we got to save some money on our house insurance because when it was with aluminum wiring, it was, the premiums were higher, so there was that bonus too, so. But yeah, apparently, like, they said they only used aluminum wiring for, like, one year while they were building houses or something before they discovered that it was, it was causing so much problems. And, of course, like, that was the year the house was built because, you know, <laughs> just our luck, right? But yeah, that came up in our house inspection when we bought the place. The guy said, yeah, this is aluminum wiring. You're probably going to want to replace that sooner rather than later. Yeah. But everything else about the house was great, so... Yeah, I'm happy with it. There's been a few, you know, renos that we've done, but like there wasn't anything wrong with the actual house. It's been cosmetic stuff. We did have to replace the roof after we were here for, for a couple of years because it was a 30 year roof and the house was like 35 years old or older by that point, so something like that so it, honestly it had held out for longer than than expected and then we got we had a 50 year roof put on so yeah we should be good for a good long while and we had to replace the furnace because same thing the furnace was like original to the house and honestly i was surprised it lasted that long yeah it died in the middle of a cold snap in winter and our son was a baby and uh i remember he had my husband had to go and sort of keep it running all night it had to be like manually restarted or something yeah the whole night so he uh he kept it running just enough so that the pipes wouldn't freeze and we brought kiddo into our room so that we could use some space heaters so we didn't have to heat the whole place just the bedroom until we could get through till the morning and yeah and then, yeah, my husband bought a new motor for it just to hold it till we could order a whole new furnace. So my husband actually put in the furnace himself. Yeah, like I said, it's and again, we just got it inspected by an HVAC guy after it was done. And he certified that, yeah, all the work was done correctly. So, yeah, I am really, really glad that he's so handy because that has saved us a lot of money and I mean, honestly, he said some of the work he's seen done by actual, like, professionals has been not good. Like, when he, um, when he did, redid the wiring, he said up in the attic, he said he couldn't believe it. He said it was like this big rat's nest of, like, you know, interconnecting wires. And he said, honestly, like, somebody must have passed some money under the table for this to pass inspection because there is no way it was up to code. You know, it was... It was not well done. And again, he said, can't believe it didn't start a fire before this. So, yeah. Because, yeah, the number one cause of fires after smoking accidents is bad wiring. At least I think that's what I read. Yeah. But we're not smokers, so we don't have that issue. But. Big areas like this go through a lot of thread very quickly. Yeah, or um, he was uh, doing renovations downstairs, so he had to redo. Oh, because I don't know why they did this, but in our basement, you remember those old, ugly stucco walls they used to have on the outside of houses in like the 80s, where it was like just big chunks sort of slapped on the side and texturized. They had that on the inside of the house for some reason. Like, I have no idea why. It's it's not pretty. And honestly, it's just dangerous. If you fall against it, it's gonna, you know, you're gonna get major road rash. And uh, 
Yeah, and to remove it, my husband tried to use a belt sander and it broke the belt on it, so that didn't work. So eventually he said what he had to do was he had to take his drill and like drill lines of holes till he like perforated it and then like break the drywall right off in pieces because there was no other way to get through it. You couldn't saw through it, you couldn't sand through it. It was, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he did that. But anyway, in the process of tearing those walls out to redo them, he said he found a big piece of um, drywall broken in half and just sort of shoved into the, uh, into the, uh, what you might call it, the insulation. Like, cause somebody couldn't be bothered to take it outside, so they just freaking dry rolled it right into the wall. Like, nice. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, I remember we had our vents uh, cleaned out because it was so dusty. Like, I could dust three times a day, and it was still dust everywhere, like as if I hadn't dusted in a month. So we called the duct guys to come and uh, clean it out, and they said, yeah, they found a whole pile of uh, of drywall chunks that had just been somebody had swept them right into one of the vents and left it there like i said well no wonder it was causing such an issue like again somebody was lazy to actually pick those up and put them in the garbage where they belong so they just like sweeping dirt under a rug right they just swept it into the ducts like nice <laughs> Ugh. yeah my dad built houses for a while when i was a kid but he doesn't cut corners on stuff. And so, like he said, he, he couldn't be competitive. Yeah. And, uh, but he said, you know, there was one, one place we bought, uh, they bought a lot to build on and it ended up being basically swamp land. It was not good. And so my dad actually went and had it properly like dug out and filled in and everything before he built on it. And like nobody in the lots around him did. And we went down that street 10 years later and every single house was sagging and falling apart except for the one my dad did. So, yeah. Like I said, he doesn't cut corners on that kind of stuff. So, yeah. The uh, the smell of wet concrete uh, makes me and my sister nostalgic. We say it smells like childhood because, yeah, we remember that from foundations being poured. Yeah, it was a few years my dad did that, so. I remember once, too, we had a bonfire to clear the land like you often do. And uh, a coat hanger, a copper coat hanger ended up in there and uh, made the beautiful green flames. Yeah. Because that's what they use to get the uh, green color in fireworks is copper. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Like, it wasn't intentionally done, but, uh, yeah, I remember sitting there watching it kind of mesmerized for, like, hours. It was so pretty. It's such a pure, almost like electric kind of green when it burns. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Okay, so when I continue on with that black, I'm probably going to start from the right side at that point since I finished that thread. Okay, but we're going to go over to the left again a bit and then probably going to work some here so that I can continue doing the black so we're just going to skip all over the place my uh, ADHD method of stitching <laughs> as I often say This was my other color that I got on a cone, 3799. Yeah, so it's used a lot in all my patterns, that and 310. Okay, so that's four there.
like I said, I think we're done Goron Link here. Because his other leg is kind of hiding behind the central link there. So. Yeah, so I was like, I think 102 stitches when I started this session. So we'll see how far we get. get quite a lot I think more than usual because you know, the big blocks of color tend to go quite quickly okay. Ooh, excuse me I tell you I'm still adjusting to that Ready time change. Yeah. This one takes the longest, I find. continue with this thread without closing stuff in but I'm going to take break it up and do another color that way I can keep stitching without injuring myself yeah it's interesting because even if in the end I end up doing the same number of stitches taking the time to uh, change colors like this keeps me from hurting next day because I once did like a thousand stitches in a day and I was fine the next day but then one time I did 600 stitches but because it was like all one color and I never took the breaks my arms were just killing me yeah they were burning so yeah I have learned to make myself take the breaks break the rhythm up and keeps me from hurting myself Yeah, so I still have one more acupuncture treatment to go, but my neck has been better. So, like, I can, I had this sort of one position where I couldn't look up or it would pinch, and I can look up now. I'm still careful the way I move, but, yeah, I can look now in that direction and it doesn't hurt. So, I've had a couple of soreness times, but, uh, yeah, on the whole, I think it's been better, so I may sort of go every couple of months for maintenance. Yeah, yesterday I actually had no neck pain at all, which I hadn't had in weeks, so that was much better. Yeah, it was kind of like I didn't even realize it until... The afternoon I was like, oh wait, my neck hasn't hurt today. You know, I was so used to it that yeah. It was kind of a surprise to realize it hadn't. So yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, I've had times when I've thrown out my back, but it's it's usually my neck that's the issue and not my back. Okay, so I guess it's almost like I'm doing a big wide <laughs> diagonal section here. Yeah. So here's the shadowy side of the mask of truth there. It's part there. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I recently discovered Father Brown Mysteries on uh, Vision TV, so I've been binging that. <laughs> Got the theme stuck in my head. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's based on the novels of, I um, can't remember his initials, but Chesterson, Chesterton, something like that. Yeah. So I've been quite enjoying those. being done by uh, the BBC. Okay. Oh, pardon me. Just sort of working enough into this area that I can do the black without closing anything in. Yeah. So sometimes I might decide too to just sort of break up the black between the two areas and not stitch so much into this right hand side of it as well. It all just depends on how I'm feeling. So I've done it where I break it up today and I'm gonna do it in one big continuous area just yeah there's no rules that's just how I feel like stitching today so so now that I've done that one I won't have to work any further right for the black for the next three rows what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a row of black, then I'm going to go over to the left and do a bit there, and then I'm going to do another row of black, do the same thing. And then after I've done the third row of black, I'll probably fill in a bit more on the mask here and carry on like that. So, right, I need a brand new thread. So I've sort of had people ask, you know, what should I do here if they're using my method? And it's like, oh, whichever one works best for you, you know? It's just a guideline. Okay. Oh, my goodness, pardon me. Yeah, because like each of these... It's like 15 stitches, and then I take a break. 15 stitches wide. Or sometimes what I would do is I would work with um, sort of one strand until it runs out, and then change colors to something else. That's an option, too, to also help you remember to break things up and keep from getting carpal tunnel. There's a knot there, but whatever. Those threads were just kind of twisted and didn't look quite right. Just gonna drop my needle here on the wrong side and let it untangle.
Okay. So we can take a little break, change colors. Okay, do another little of this black here. really see the progress we're making today because <laughs> of these bigger sections it goes very quickly that's why I think we'll definitely hit 85% this uh, month because a lot of the stuff in this area has bigger blocks of color in the far right hand lower corner where Deku Link is has more detail so that'll go a bit slower oh that didn't go quite off by a millimeter. But yeah, by the time I get to that lower right corner, it'll be so close to being done. It'll be like 90% done, so. Okay, so now I'm going to yeah, just pick a few colors. There are just a few stitches to do. Break that up.
still good. Finding pieces of uh, pet hair <laughs> from our guinea pig, even though she's passed away. Yeah, she was very, very fluffy, so fur everywhere. Yeah, and you would pet her, just like drag your hand along her back once and you'd your hand would be covered in hair. <laughs> oh, she had black and white on her, so if I was wearing black yoga pants, yeah. You could see all the, the white hairs. Yeah, she was like the most asymmetrical guinea pig I ever saw. She had one black ear, one black foot. One side of her was almost completely white, and then the other side had black and brown patches. Yeah. And she had cowlicks because she was so fluffy. And her hair kind of in the front on her forehead kind of swooped down. We called it her punk rocker hair. Yeah, it was pretty darn cute. Sometimes if she got it all messed up, it would look like a unicorn horn <laughs> sticking out. Yeah. yeah, we miss her. She was such a sweet thing. Yeah, we never even tended to get a pet when we got her. Like I said she was a rescue. Well, um, my husband's sister was living with us at the time because she had moved from another province. And so she was staying with us till she could uh, get herself established. And um, yeah, she, well, she had, she had um, lined up a family to take her and they backed out at the last minute. And um my sister-in-law was working at the pet store at the time and she said, well, she had the weekend off and she didn't really want to leave the piggy there, you know, on the weekend if she wasn't there to look after her. You know, when she had her there during the week while she was working in the store, in the break room, you know, when she would take, take care of her. But she said she didn't want to leave her over the weekend, so she brought her home temporarily <laughs> to uh, stay at our place. Yeah, to, you know, get her better, fatten her up find her a, home, a forever home and then yeah we ended up being her forever home yeah she never left we got too attached to her so after the first the first family didn't take her yeah we ended up taking her she stole our hearts so yeah so yeah like I said we never set out to get a pet but you know as I often say we don't choose our animals they choose us <laughs> They choose their humans. Yeah, I have lots of friends with similar stories. They went to the shelter to adopt an animal and the animal they ended up with was not the one they would have picked at first glance, but that animal seemed to pick them. That's how my sister said it was with her cat. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have minded a cat, but my husband is allergic. So he can visit people who have cats for a couple of hours if he loads up on Claritin, but yeah, he wouldn't be able to live with one, so. Yeah, my dad is even more allergic. It's really bad. Yeah, we had a house that we lived in had been owned by a lady with cats before us. And um, we had been there a year or something. But anyway, there must have been a, still a cat hair in the, in the carpet and my dad got it in his eye and it swelled up like crazy just from one. Yeah, so he's really badly allergic. Like he can't stand to be around them at all. He said, and he doesn't understand when we know people who have cats, even outdoors, they always want to come and like sit on him and stuff. He's like, like, why do they always pick me? You know, they always pick the person who doesn't like them. Because <sighs> yeah, he's always like, keep that cat away from me. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, I'm lucky pollen, dander, that kind of stuff doesn't bother me as much generally. It depends. Sometimes we'll have a bad year and it will really bug me, but yeah. My sensitivities are more with food things than things you can inhale. <laughs> A bit of confetti over here because I believe oops that this yeah I believe that this is the edge of his sleeve here and his arm starts here so yeah there's a bit of detail there yeah as you can see there's going to be quite a few different colors attached along here I think said I'm not really a dog person I mean I like dogs but I don't want to do the work that comes with owning one yeah and, you know it's it's not fair to have one if you're not prepared to do the work of walking them and playing with them and stuff yeah it's funny because our guinea pig sometimes we would take her out of the cage to play with her and she would just kind of climb up in someone's lap and sit there and that was it <laughs> or she'd look for her little pet bed her nest we called it and just want to sit in there yeah it's funny oh and she didn't like to walk on the hardwood or the linoleum floor because it was cold on her feet yeah my husband like took her out once and then he held her sort of you know a couple inches off of the uh floor so she could get down if she wanted to and she kind of looked at it and it was just like nope forget it because yeah his arm was warm and the floor was not <laughs> Hmm. Okay. That yeah, was kind of nice though, because I said when I had to clean her cage, I would put her in her little pet bed in the middle of the uh, hardwood floor and then she wouldn't run around so I wouldn't have to catch her because she didn't like, yeah, she didn't want to walk on the cold floor so she'd stay in her island, we called it. And then usually I'd spread out some blankets or something and we'd, or we'd put her on the rug and play with her there. Yeah. Yeah, they're a fun pet because they're very curious. sort of go around smelling things and investigating them. And if you sit still for long enough, they'll come up and investigate you too. <laughs> yeah, we had a hamster for a while when I was a kid, but hamsters are kind of more indifferent to humans. Yeah, guinea pigs are very affectionate. You know, they purr and stuff. So... Okay, so hold that in. So all this here is black, but it is one stitch further than I've stitched up there. So I'm going to take a look and I may do some more filling in so that I can do some more of that. Yeah, I can see right now. Yeah, I think I'll fill a bit more in. Well, we'll see how long this thread lasts for. Probably need to add a new one. Do this whole oops, row here. The 
this is all purples here, so I'm gonna save the pin stitches there. Grab a new thread. Goodness. Hmm. little knot at the very end there so let's clip that off side for now because I think that's as far as I'm going to go for a bit anyway. So yes, yeah, sometimes I end up with a straighter line instead of a diagonal one. That's just how it worked out. Okay, one, two, three. all that in just so I can do all of these.
these big sections definitely use up color very quickly. Okay, let's see. is extremely short. See if I can get a stitch out of it or not. It's kind of borderline when I saved it. <laughs> yeah, I think though I can manage. Carry it very far to pin stitch it, that is for sure. See if there's another needle that needs replacing or not. Seems a little rough, so we'll see how it does with this piece of thread. Yeah, I almost. 
it's never break a needle. It's usually when it starts to catch on the floss or the fabric that it's time to go. So far, the eye of this needle seems fine. Sliding along the thread without snagging, so I think we're still good. arm now. You can tell from the colors. Below the edge of his sleeve. Take a break soon. Oh, let's see, thirty-seven. Twenty-seven. There we go. Yeah. Need to get up and stretch my legs pretty soon, I think. have as many threads attached because of that big black section there but now I'm gonna get a whole bunch along here you can see there's a lot of different colors but yeah I think we'll do a few stitches of this and then I'm gonna have to get up and stretch I can feel my uh my thigh muscle is starting to want to knot up on me so I'll get up and walk around for a while
stitch was just lying kind of funny. So get it to lie nice and smooth again. We started at past 100, we're like 102, but still we're ending at past 400. So 403, so yeah, I did 201 stitches in this session, right? Or no, 301, because I can't count, right? Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna take a break there. Like I said, my leg muscle's starting to knot up on me, so I'm gonna have to get up and move around to get my blood flowing. So um, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.